Hello and welcome to 4.5's Design, it's Jay here. I've been working on um, a bouquet of flowers. I've been asked to do, I suppose it's my first paid commission, some flowers for a birthday. Um, I wanted to do a bouquet. Uh, I've been doing lilies and roses like I've done before but used different techniques and different colourways and I'll be sharing those in a video soon. However, if I was going to do a bouquet, I knew I needed to do some foliage to pull it all together. And I had been asked if I could do foliage, particularly hostas, so I thought I'd have a try and see what I could do. So I started first of all with basic foliage, so a generic leaf, quite simple to do. But of course with a simple leaf you can then change the colour to get a completely different look and add different leaves again to give a, a different shape and form. Using that same pattern I then went on to do a eucalyptus. So here I used different colourways and a different technique to give a sort of frosty look to these eucalyptus leaves. So it's the same pattern leaf as the original one I've just shown you, but different colourways, different ways of assembling it on its stem and with this lovely frosted sheen. So that's one type of eucalyptus. I then use that frosting technique to do perhaps what is the more traditional looking eucalyptus. and then went on to look at different types of ivies. So I've come up with four different types. This is a fairly basic one, still looking lucky, realistic and gorgeous I think. I live near a local graveyard and walk the dogs there and quite a few of the old monuments are covered in this style, dark leaf ivy. By changing the shape of the leaves slightly and having different techniques you can produce a completely different look of ivy. Again that's a little bit more reminiscent of wild ivy that's growing over old buildings. And then changing the look again. There's two types of variegation that I've noticed. One where the variegation is on the outside of the leaf and green in the middle and the other where the paler colour is on the centre of the leaf and the green around the outside. So those are all very similar techniques, different colourways though, um, slightly different techniques in terms of how the colour is applied and for some, like this one here, I added some veining to give it a realistic look. This first one was just plain. And then having done those, being as I was asked if I could do some hostas, I've been working on doing a range of hostas. So again, different colourways of those from plain green to patterned some with the veining, some not. So I'm going to show you now how I did those. This first video I'm going to cover these basics, so the generic leaf and two types of eucalyptus. And then I'll do a separate video showing you the four different types of ivy and the different types of hostas. So keep watching. So a quick recap in this video. I showed you how to make some basic 
generic foliage you can vary with the amount of leaves that you do and the colour of the leaves and then showed you how to use that same pattern to make some eucalyptus and then using the same technique on those to make a different type of eucalyptus. In the next video I'll show you how to make four different types of ivy and different colourways of hostas. Starting with the basic leaves, here's one I prepared earlier um, using a pattern I had for the leaves of a small lily. So I used that pattern to make that this generic leaf pattern. And the way I did it, although there are alternative ways that I've come to prefer, I think is to take your coffee filter, fold it in half, draw around your pattern and cut that out so you then have two pieces of coffee filter and you need two of those for each leaf but I'm going to colour them one at a time so that's two layers of coffee filter there and for this green one I'm using a combination of leaf green and because I want it quite dark I'm going to add some black. So I've already added some leaf green into my little pot with a little tiny bit of water and I added about that much leaf green. I'm going to add the same amount of black. And I'm going to stir those together. And because I want the colour to set and not run at all, or not run as much, I'm going to add some glue. This is your basic Elmer School glue. I have used before the cheapest PVA glue I can find. And I'm just adding a, a good glug of that. And we're going to mix that in. This does two if not three things. Firstly, it will bind the colour to stop it running. The second thing, if you had a pure colour rather than a mixed one and you added the glue, you'll see that it lightens the colour. And thirdly, when you apply this to your coffee filters and you then put your sealant mud podge over the top it gives it quite an almost rubbery texture so anyway i'm going to apply that color now so it's quite a dark green and i'm going to smudge that all over and then i shall leave that to dry if you are impatient like me, you can quite happily do a few of these on your baking sheet and then pop them in a low oven and they will dry really quickly for you. And as you can see, I'm sort of layering the colour on so you get a nice deep rich green. And you can see that there. Okay. And that's what I did for my so that's your basic method. There are alternatives that you can do. Just wash my brush out. <clears throat> and that's by pre-dyeing your papers. And I've done this before in previous videos, but I'll just show you the effect that you can get here. So these papers above, that you can see here, I've pre-dyed. So I've put some of the colour in a bowl of warm water, dipped my coffee filters in and then dried them in the oven. So this first one here is that leaf green that I used, but without adding the black. So you can see what a vibrant 
it's almost tree frog green colour. The second one is a different brand of icing paste, icing colour paste. This is from Sugar Flare and it's holly green. So that's quite a deep colour. I've just cut that out for you so you can see the colour of that. This next one is a mixture of um, Kelly green and a little bit of black and I made that up some time ago um, and kept the remains of it instead of tipping away the colour that I had I kept the rest of it that's been in there for weeks and weeks and it still works so don't throw any spare colouring away you can still use it and then this one at the end is a combination of violet and brown to give you that lovely deep rich colour so these I prepared before and then stuck them together so that is a sheet of two that are stuck together with glue I then used my pattern and cut out two pieces so that's two stuck together that's two stuck together and this top one I think you can see the difference there I've added a layer of glue there to seal it and I shall show you in a second how to construct these by sticking those two together with a, a vein through the middle but for each of these you can see the difference it makes to the colour or the texture of it if you add that glue it's shinier and it's almost sort of rubbery very slightly just wanted to show you something else as well what I'm just showing you here is that with the same colours and slightly different techniques you can get completely different looks just before I start to show you how I assemble the leaf I'm just going to show you the different effects you can get um, with the different colours so this one here this leaf is the leaf green dye that was one of the pre-dyed um, coffee filters that I then stuck together so that's two layers of coffee filters both dyed leaf green and stuck together I've then added some brown to give a shading effect to that leaf this one here is the same colour the leaf green but applied to raw coffee filters that haven't been dyed yet so I took um, my coffee filter folded it over put on the pattern drew round it and cut out the shape applied leaf green and then a little bit of brown on the edge to give that a shading so that was just the coffee filter the icing gel watered down slightly two colors to give that effect and this third one is exactly the same as the one I've just shown you but this time I added the Elmer's glue to the coffee filter and uh, the icing gel and the water mixture so that's the same leaf green that's the same brown to give you the shading on the edge but that's got the Elmer's glue in so three different effects using exactly the same colours just depends on how you treat the colours and the glue. So I'm going to assemble these, but just before I forget, one final technique you might want to do. In addition to pre-dyeing coffee filters and sticking them together to give you the thickness you need, this one here, I didn't pre-dye it, but I did dye with the icing gel colour two layers of coffee filters so I dyed them let them set then glued them together and then applied a layer of Mod Podge on the top so you've got a sort of very very bendy almost rubberized product here the material to work with so I'll use this when I made one of the ivy leaves that I'll be showing you in the next video but that's actually quite a handy way to produce the material you need to make a range of different foliage 
So now let's let's stick these couple of leaves together. I'm going to use these two here. So that's two layers and that's two layers. I'm going to stick the two together. I'll just zoom you in just a little bit more. And for this, you need two things to build your foliage arrangement. You need your stem and you need the vein for the leaf. So for this, for the stem, I'm using this plastic coated wire. And for the vein, this is wire that's thinner wire, but it's still quite strong. It's hard to bend and that's covered in paper. Because I want them to both the same color, I'm going to use some stem tape to cover these. So whichever colour stem tape you wish, if you've got a, um, a light coloured stem then you might not even need to cover this. You're just going to see the bit at the bottom so you could alternatively just cover half of it because the only bit that you will be seeing is the bit that sticks out from the bottom of your leaf and attaches to the stem. So you might just need to get away with covering it half up. So with the stem tape, I'm twisting this, this. I think this is back to front the way I do, but it works for me. I'm twisting the stem and I'm pulling the stem tape down. I am right handed, but I still think that's the wrong way to do it, but it works for me. So I've now got the stem covered. And if you run your finger around it, it's, it's nice and smooth. So that's my stem. I've got my vein or my, the rib vein of the leaf done ready. So, first step, apply lots of glue and to stick these two together, I'm just using a PVA glue. This happens to be Elmer's School Glue. I've used the cheapest sort of craft PVA glue going previously. Plenty of glue on, particularly around the edges. Now, because you might be wiggling this about which, uh, once you've attached it to the stem, what I would advise you to do, and which I find works best, is if you also put a little tiny blob of super glue just at the base of that, that helps to seal it in place. Otherwise, they can move about a little bit. So I'm now going to take the top of the leaf and I'm going to position the bottom part very carefully. So the bottom of the leaf is exactly where I need it to be. You will find when you're doing this that the super glue will stick to your fingers if you're not careful. But because you've got that rib in between, the top layer will be ever so slightly smaller than your bottom layer. So you may need to trim that leaf when you've finished it. This one doesn't look too bad, but we'll have a look after. I tend to get the bottom bit as near as damn it as I can together and then the centre bit and then the sides will take care of themselves. And I'm going to leave that to dry a little bit. I mentioned about making sure you've got plenty of glue down the edge. I can see a little bit there that just needs a bit more of attention. Just making sure that that's closed. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to leave that to set for a little bit. Here's one that I did before that has been setting, and this is the um, brownie ready colour. 
and as you can see at the bottom here the leaf is sort of cut off a little bit there it doesn't blend in well with the stem or the veining so what I'm going to do there is to just neaten that up a little bit and you might also be able to see on this one the bottom is just ever so slightly bigger than the top because you've got that vein in the middle so I'm just going to trim that bottom where it's a little bit bigger and I'm just going to shape that leaf into the stem. I'm going to turn over and do the same here. And you can see here, I need to neaten that edge. And this is where it doesn't matter that you're doing these exactly the same for each leaf. Because no two leaves are exactly the same. But this is your chance to just perfect your look to get it as neat as you can front and back make sure you're happy with that and then what I started to do to make absolutely sure one it's stuck together and two it's as neat as I can make it double check my edges are stuck together and I go over the whole thing again with a really massive splodgy layer of glue because this is going to seal it it's going to seal those edges so they don't look like you've just cut them which you have just done and it's going to give it a different sort of texture as well it might look a mess now you might think oh my gosh that's never going to dry with all that glue but it will and I do both sides the same So I'm making sure that round the edge has the glue because it's a sealant so as well as giving it a texture and a sheen it will also seal the edges for you so you've then got a very robust leaf and when if you make all your arrangements in this way they're gonna last you for months and months so there we are that's your first leaf I'm going to leave that to set I'm not going to put that in the oven to dry I'm going to leave it to set there I wait until it's ready and then all you need to do then is to apply your leaves to your stem in the pattern of your choosing so for these I tended to have the largest leaf at the top and then I made several of the smaller leaves to go down the stem I've done them with three, I've done them with five, and I've done them with six, where I've got an odd number down one side. Either way, play around with it till you get what you wish. It's not intended to replicate a particular leaf. It is more of a generic leaf that you're just having as foliage in any arrangements or decor items that you have. So we're now going to show you how using the same leaves pattern I can make something completely different with the colour and then a new technique I've discovered.
To make the first style of eucalyptus leaves, I'm using the same pattern as I did before for the generic foliage, two sizes, and then to get the smaller size that I've used at the top of this little stem of leaves and the bottom, I've just cut that small one down slightly, but I'll probably do a, a pattern to include all three sizes to go along with this video. And I've laid out my coffee filters just so you can see roughly the shape that we'll be using with the two small ones, a collection of the medium size, two big ones, and two small ones at the bottom. These are coffee filters folded over. So each one of these is two layers of coffee filters. For this um, eucalyptus, I'm not using four layers. These are quite soft, gentle flowers at uh, leaves. So I don't need them to be four layers. Two is quite enough. For the colors, strange colorway here but i'm using four different colors to make three different colors that i'm going to use on the leaves i'm using brown lemon yellow burgundy and kelly green i've only just had burgundy before that i mixed brown and red together to get that color but i started first of all with kelly green and all of these colors are very watered down because I don't want them to be too strident. So that's the Kelly green, but I thought that was too, too bright green. So I then mixed it with some of the lemon yellow. And I added the tiniest little bit of brown. So it gives me a sort of muted colour. If you can see that there. I'm just going to bend this down just a little bit while I'm showing you this bit. So that was the Kelly Green on its own. This is Kelly Green Lemon Yellow with a tiny bit of brown. You can see the huge difference. I then got that Lemon Yellow and I mixed some of my Kelly Green and Yellow mixture into the lemon so it was, it was a lot more yellowy coloured. And again, I did a tiny little bit of brown. So we've got a sort of colour that looks like that, just a slightly more yellowy version of the colour we've just made. And then finally, we won't need much of this, but I've mixed up burgundy with brown. So very watered down burgundy, very watered down brown, mixed together here. So we've got that sort of colour. And as far as this particular um, combination is concerned. I'm going to use that one, I'm going to use that one, and I'm going to use that one. So the one I'm going to use mainly, just making sure I can clean brush, is this yellow mixture. So this is, I'll just move that up slightly so you can see, this is going to be mainly the yellow with the yellow Kelly Green mixture in them. Oops. My tripod's falling over. So that's the double layer of coffee filters. I'm going to use mainly that colour. It's very watered down. And I'm just applying it sort of randomly on these leaves. I'm then going to use just a little bit of that green. So this is the Kelly green and yellow mixture. Just applying that and blending it together. 
gonna have to watch I don't put my paintbrush in the wrong pot of colour here. I'm likely to any moment. Because it's watery, it's easier to blend in the two colours. Do a little bit more blending in a moment. And then finally, where there's a space left, just a tiny little bit of that burgundy and brown watered down mixture, just on the tiniest little bit here and there. And again, because it's very watery, it's going to move and get absorbed and blend in to the rest of the colours. No particular rhyme and reason here. I just noticed when I looked at pictures of eucalyptus, they'd, they'd got this little bit of red on. I think I need to add a little bit more yellow on this one. The red is just a little tiny bit of embellishment. It shouldn't be a major colour. And I'm just going to go over with the lemon just to blend all those colours together. I shall now take this to my oven because I can't wait overnight or wait for a few hours for it dry. It wouldn't take overnight. It probably will dry quite fairly quickly, but not quick enough for me because I want to crack on with this recording. Now I don't quite like that one there. It looks a bit too stripy, if you can see this one here. So I think what I'm going to do Add a bit more green at the top, a bit more green here, just to try and move those colours a little bit. Okay, off to the oven. I've dried these off then and I've stuck them together in the same way as we did with the previous leaves. So that's two layers of coffee filters coloured, stuck together with glue, with a bit of stem tape, uh, with a bit of um, a vein down the middle. Now for this, the difference um, for this one is that I used this bendy wire because I wanted something that was a little bit more pliable and floppy and I covered that with some green stem tape so that with the finished article you've got something that's more delicate and moves a bit more like a eucalyptus wood. So I use the wire on a roll. Obviously it's the wrong colour. So I use my light green stem tape to cover it. And I've got um, my stem covered with the green, same green stem tape ready to fix these on. But first thing we need to do is this new step, just to give it that um, eucalyptus soft um, hue to the leaves and for this I'm going to need three things first of all some corn flour I don't know whether that's the same as corn starch in the US but we call it corn, corn flour here in um, the UK you need some spray mount and tea strainer <coughs> that's my tea strainer and pop some of your corn flour in the tea strainer and I'm going to spray the front side of the leaf with the spray do the same on the back and then And 
lovely rub it off and it's going to first of all mute the colors and secondly give it this dusty sort of hue that you see on eucalyptus leaves so just doing that again you can see the difference it makes between the two you can still see those colors that we took time to use but they're not so important so you can see why i didn't spend ages where i was positioning those colors it just gives that underlying idea of color so spray mount a bit of corn flour and then dust them off Probably put a bit too much on that first one. Let's just do it again here. <clears throat> Let's try with this next one. So there's the first two. We have the slightly smaller ones that would go at the top. So here we go. I'm going to hold on to it because it's fairly nice to put this frame out. So I definitely put too much on the first one, so you just need a little sprinkle. And then rub it so it just dusts that surface. That's better. Let's do a couple more. You're going to have to play around with this till you get it the look that you're happiest with. I think I'm running out of corn flour now. Probably need to do the, the last two again. It does look a mess. Yeah, corn flour all over, over your fingers. But it does look really cool. I'm going to just throw some of this corn flour that's on my bench. So you can choose how much you put on to give you the look that you prefer. I just like the icing of the cake bit. definitely don't need a lot of spray starch this one here I can feel it, it feels quite wet I must have put too much on so perhaps just take your time keep your distance with your, like your spray starch with your spray mount so there if I can show you sort of up close you can see the effect that that gives once you've got rid of all the corn flour off your fingers and off your workbench and you assemble these, it won't look so much of a hot mess, I promise you, because you will then end up with this sort of effect. And for this, as you can see, I've attached two small leaves at the top, then a series of the medium sized ones, two large ones and then two of the smaller ones at the bottom again. So I shall attach these now 
when I've washed my fingers. Let me show you that finished product. And remove these leaves now off my paper and I can dispose of that. For now I've just rinsed my fingers that are by now quite sticky with glue and spray them out. Sometimes I like to just cut the stem tape in half so you haven't got such a big build up of stem tape when you're wrapping wrapping it around the centre bit of your leaves and the stem at the same time. Just take those two bits now. So I'm going to start at the top with the first two. Just going to put one either side. That's my little one. The next two. I'm leaving probably about a centimetre of stem after the end of the leaves before I attach it to the stem. I'll just show you in case I explain that terribly well. You can see I've got just a little bit of between the base of, of the leaf and you carry on then keep on adding your leaves again until you get the look that you prefer the leaves fairly close together with the eucalyptus. Not an expert on that but the pictures I've seen they do need to be fairly close together. Now I've applied them, I am going to put a piece of broader stem tape over that final bit just to neaten up that whole bottom part of the stem. But I think that gives you an idea of how you can build up your eucalyptus. And a couple of those together. 
and a bouquet or a decoration would be a great addition. I'm going to show you now how I do the final part of today's video and that's the second version of eucalyptus. For this final item of foliage in this video I'm going to use similar techniques to what we've used previously to make this eucalyptus and I think this is going to be my go-to for when I'm making the lily and rose bouquet. So what we need to do to start with is to dye our coffee filters and for this I'm mixing leaf green with royal blue. I started off 50-50 mixture but found that I needed to add some more royal blue so it's roughly I would say about a third leaf green and two thirds royal blue. Put a little blob of those into my little mixing tray with some water, added my PVA glue, mixed it together and then what I'm going to do is take a sheet of coffee filter. I've just done this in half just for ease of showing you. But I just wanted you to see how that green has been tinged by blue. I think you can see it on the side there. You know you've got the right colour when it looks that teal colour. I've noticed that Wilton do a teal and I was very tempted to get that. Um, however, I wasn't sure how often I would need that colour, so I preferred to stick to mixing the colours I'd already got. So I'm taking the sheet of coffee filter and applying this mixture of the two colours, plus a little bit of water, plus a little bit of glue. And the advantage of this, I've found, is one I can colour just the amount of coffee filter that I need for the project I'm working on and two it gives me a lovely rich colour if I just zoom in a little bit here what I'm doing is as I'm going through and I've probably got a shadow there from it's a lovely sunny day here so I'll just move a little bit is it got a lovely rich colour and as I'm going I'm smoothing this out to make sure I've got no wrinkles. And you continue doing that so you've got two pieces covered. So I'd cover one piece, cover the second piece and then when they're both dry stick them together with either your PVA glue or Mod Podge and then once they're stuck together, I would then apply, as I've done here, to this one. Can you see this side here? I've applied a top coat of glue so that it gives that lovely rubbery feel to it. Again, I'm trying to make sure when I do this that I get rid of the wrinkles. And you can see why. This is one of these leaves that I did where I didn't do that and you have an annoying wrinkle on. I'm not so bothered with these because of the final step that I'm going to do on these leaves, um, but really that's not a good sign. So if you take your time, you can smooth it with your brush so that you get all those wrinkles out. Once you've prepared your um, coffee filter, and this is two layers dyed, stuck together, and then a top coat of glue. This isn't the right colour, but I'm just using this to illustrate the next step. What we need to do then is to cut out our shapes. So as you can see here, I've already done this using the pattern that I'm going to attach to this video for the different shapes and um, sizes of the eucalyptus leaves. But when you're cutting them out, you've got two layers there. You're going to need two cut out leaf shapes per leaf. So you draw around the first one. Then turn your pattern over and draw around the second one. 
and then cut those out. So you'll then have two shapes and you're going to then, that's that way up actually, two shapes and then you're going to sandwich those together so that the shiny side is on the outside for both the front and the back and you're going to stick a piece of wire in between. So we'll do that now. So for, for this eucalyptus, I'm using this really, really fine wire. You can see it's really, really dainty and delicate. It is a wire, it's just very fine. And I'm doing that for two reasons. One, all I need is a way of attaching the leaves to the stem. I don't particularly need to see a rib down the centre, I just need something to attach that to the stem. I'm not going to cover the wire because as you can see from this eucalyptus here, the leaves are attached right at the base of the leaf to the stem so you won't see the wire. So all we need to do and I'm just going to use craft glue for this. Is to stick these two pieces together. Make sure you go right to the edge of your leaf. And then I've mentioned this before, but it's particularly important when you're using this really fine wire is to add a little bit of super glue to make sure that the top layer and the bottom layer will stick together and will stick to the wire. And I know I've got a shadow here, it's a lovely sunny day so just bear with me. My little tip for you is to add your blob of the securing glue just to the centre of your leaf, then apply the top leaf, get it as near to the bottom of your leaf as possible. So that's the, the bottom and you're making sure that those two layers, oh that's really really very shadowy. You're making sure that those bottom layers are perfectly aligned and then work your way up to the top. Because you put that super glue in the middle you can use your fingers to smooth those edges so they're really solidly in place without the risk of getting super glue all over your fingers. If you find that there is, and here I've got, I need to straighten that out, if you find that you've got an overlap where one layer is a little bit bigger than the other, you just need to trim that off, that's all. So I tend to trim the, these off immediately so I don't forget. What a shame it's so sunny. I thought I'd say that. And just a final step, I use a little bit of glue, just any that I've got still left on my brush, just to seal that and those edges, particularly if you have had to cut it. It just gives a slightly smoother finish, I think. You could, if you wish, go over the whole leaf again with some glue or mud podge to seal it and give you the sheen that you need but because of the next step because what we're going to do with these leaves I think that might be a little bit of a waste of time so that is the final leaf and, step there. and I tend to um, lay them out like this just so that in, that, in my mind I've got an idea of where the leaves will go. Fairly straightforward to stick them to the stem. I'm using one of my favourite um, 
plastic coated wires and I have covered it with some stem tape first. But before I attach it, I'm going to do this final step that we did with the previous eucalyptus. So I've just changed my camera angle now. I think that's a little bit better. It's such a gorgeous day. It's a shame to complain about the sunshine. So I'm just going to take two of my leaves and apply some of this spray mount that we used before. It's sticky enough to stick without the um, cornflower being permanently stuck down. So having learnt my lesson from before, I'm just doing it a little bit at a time. So I'm just applying a little bit first. And then while the glue is still st tacky, Just smooth that corn flour or icing sugar, whichever you're using. And perhaps needs a tiny bit more. And I'm going to continue to do that for all of these leaves before I show you how to assemble them. Okay, we're going to assemble these now. So I've already pre-covered um, my wire with stem tape and I've cut my stem, stem tape into half. I prefer using these thinner sections. I think it's easier to handle when you're doing something fiddly. And I've also laid out my leaves in the pattern that I'm going to stick on so that it's easier to do. And I'm just going to start by taking the, the smallest ones that I'm going to put at the top that are sort of more circular in shape and I'm just going to overlay those over the top of the stem and start by wrapping my stem tape around. Now as I mentioned before, what we're looking for here is the leaves to be as close to that stem as possible. So once you've applied your first two, before you continue, you can pull your wires to make sure that you can't see any wire at the top of the leaves or at the base of the leaves where it attaches to the stem. So I'm just going to work my way down, take the next size up lay those on where I want them to be vaguely one one side one another And wrap that stem tape around once to start with position the leaves where you'd like them to be and check that you can't see any wire at the base by just giving these wires a little pull and then continue to wrap that stem tape down keep your wires parallel to your stem it gives it a neater finish and I'm just eyeballing where I want these leaves to go. I'm not measuring out the distance between them. I'm going by what looks right to me. Here comes the next leaves. When I first did this, I deliberately made sure that each pair of leaves was at 90 degrees to the ones above. So where those were a V that way, I made sure that those were a V in a different way, 90 degrees. Having looked again at pictures of eucalyptus leaves, they aren't that precise. So I'm not even bothering with that. I'm just continuing down, adding the leaves and let them fall where they happen to go. So I'm just following that stem down. Just bear with me a second. I think my little dog Lily needs to be let out. There you go, look. So next size leaf down. I'm placing the, the base of the leaf as near to the stem as I can get. 
vaguely putting it one side of the stem and the other. Wrap that stem tape around. Check that you can't see any wire and if you can't and you're happy, keep your stem um, level with your wire and continue to wrap that stem tape down. Here's the largest of the leaves. I have got the pattern for these that I'll attach to the video in case you want to use that or you can do it yourself. I haven't got a real eucalyptus to go by and judge so I'm just using pictures and using the, sign, the sizing that I can remember from having had arrangements or bouquets with eucalyptus in previously. So as you can see that they spaced out not in any particular um, distance apart, regulated, I've just done it where it seems to look okay to me. And they're falling sort of randomly, not exactly 90 degrees from each other. I'm going to put the final little set of leaves and these were an odd shape compared to the others but they seem to have these smaller leaves at the bottom that were more triangular in shape rather than circular so I'm just going to add those I can see the stem there a little bit so I'm going to find the wire that is attached to that leaf and just pull it tightly so it's nice and snug and down the stem we go with that stem tape trapping that wire so that it's all disguised and attached neatly and of course I'm using the same colour stem tape as I did to cover this wire initially. So there we have it. A second type of eucalyptus to use for decor or in my case I'm going to use these in the bouquet that I'm doing.